Hey guys, welcome back to Ladybug's Garden. Today, we're going to be getting our raised beds ready for transplanting. My collard stalks have been in water for two weeks and they're beginning to push out their leaves. So we'll be planting those as well. Just a quick tip, when you are shopping for soil, look for soil that's on clearance. I was able to get this bag for $5, all because the bag had this hole in it. And since I'm topping my beds, this size bag is perfect. So today, we're going to attempt to get two beds ready. If I have enough energy after the first two beds are done, we'll try and get to a third one. I'm going to be removing all of the extra wood pieces that I have around my raised beds. So without further ado, let's get started on revitalizing our beds for the fall season. So I'm going to start by using my shovel to overturn the soil. It's pretty loose because I did just harvest all of the vegetables that I had growing in this bed last week. So the soil isn't as compacted as a couple of my other beds are. But I'm going to be revitalizing this bed by adding some amendments to the soil. First, I'm going to be adding half a bag of chicken manure. I'm going to add about a fourth of a bag of soil. I'm going to be adding blood meal and bone meal. I'm going to be layering all of my amendments and then I'm going to come in with my hand shovel. I'm going to mix everything in into the top three inches or so and I'm going to be breaking up any clumps of soil or manure that I find along the way. I am now adding blood meal and bone meal to the soil, which is going to finish off my amendments. Using the hand shovel, I'm going to mix everything in into the top three inches. Here, I'm going to be using some kitchen twine. I'm going to section off the beds into 10 squares, which will allow me to grow a lot of veggies in a small amount of space. I still have a little bit of twine and staples left over from the summer season, so I'm just going to use the twine now to follow along the same section from last season. So now I'm going to take each of the seedlings and I'm going to place them where I would like for them to grow. Looking at the collard stalks, we have five viable stalks that we can plant. Since our pots are biodegradable, I'm choosing to plant the whole pot so that I won't disturb any of the roots. I am planting all of the pots so that they are level with the soil.
when it comes to planting the collard stalks. I'm just going to push the stalks directly down into the soil and I'm going to tighten up the dirt around the stalk so that it will remain in place. Here in our first raised bed, we are growing Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cabbage, and of course our collard stalks. Moving on to bed number two, I removed the extra pieces of wood and chicken wire that I had around this raised bed. I'm going to break up the soil like I did in the first bed and remove any leftover roots that remain from the tomato plants that I had growing here. I'm also going to apply chicken manure, soil, blood meal, and bone meal. I'm going to be breaking up clumps along the way. We're also going to use kitchen twine again to section off this bed into 10 squares. As with our first raised bed, we're going to follow the same pattern from last season to section out our 10 squares using our kitchen twine. In this bed, we are going to plant another two collard stalks. We have some thousand head kale, cauliflower, and additional cabbage. Just like in our first raised bed, we are going to stick our collards directly down in the soil and we are going to tighten up the soil around the stalks as well with our biodegradable pots. I am planting each pot with the soil level. Once again, in raised bed number two, we have our collard stalks, we have thousand head kale, cauliflower, and cabbage. Coming around to bed number three, I revitalized it, sectioned it, and in this bed, we're going to plant the last collard stalk. I'm doing an experiment this year. I'm growing potatoes from seed. The variety is called Clancy Potatoes. In the last five sections, I'll be planting provider bush beans. I planted four seeds per peat pellet. I'm going to gently remove the plants and place four per square. Here with the Clancy potatoes, these will be the only plants that I remove from the pots because the roots will need to grow vigorously in order for the potatoes to grow. And I don't want the pots to hinder the roots from growing. Here are the provider bush beans that I spoke of. 
that I sold on 9-11 in peat pellets. Once again, I planted four seeds per peat pellet. And as you can see, they have terrific root growth. So I'm going to put each peat pellet in a section. I'm going to gently remove each plant from the peat pellets. And I'm going to have four plants per square. So in raised bed number three, we are growing provider bush beans, we are growing collard greens, and we have our experimental Clancy potatoes that we are growing from seed. I went ahead and revitalized the last two beds and now we're going to water everything in very well. I'm going to attempt to overwinter my strawberries. This will be the first time that I will be attempting to do this. I built this cover for my seedlings to protect them from the cabbage moth and loopers. I plan to build four more covers for my beds, but in the meantime, I will cover my seedlings with some shade cloth. But here we have all of our raised beds have been revitalized. Three of them have newly planted seedlings. We have one that's empty that I will be putting lettuce in. And the last raised bed, I decided to let my basil plants and my pineapple tomato plant grow since they were showing signs of growth. Thank you for coming along today. We'll be back in a couple of weeks to check the garden's progress. I have more seedlings in the greenhouse that will be ready for transplanting really soon. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to click the like and subscribe button and we'll catch you in the next video.